Welcome to the Meet Militia. Today's brief lesson is the first law of thermodynamics. Let's go. The first law of thermodynamics makes one and only one explicit statement. It does that mathematically. It does not do that using any form of verbiage whatsoever. Does it make any implications? No. It makes an explicit statement. What statement does it make? It says that delta U is equal to Q minus W. What does that mean in words? People like to put that in words. We can put it into words, but that then becomes a statement about what the law is about, not what the law actually is. What the law is, is that mathematical sum you've just seen. What is delta? Delta means a change in. Okay, what is U? U is the internal energy of a system. In this case, explicitly a closed system because internal energy is an extensive property. Okay, what is Q? It is the specific heat of the system concerned minus W. What is that? Any work done by that system. Okay, what does the first law of thermodynamics say? It says that the internal energy, an extensive property, of a closed thermodynamic system remains constant. It changes from one form to another. In the case where there is kit and mechanistic availability for energy to be transmuted from one form to another. That's all it says. Does the first law of thermodynamics apply to an open thermodynamic system? No, it does not. No matter what anybody says, it does not. The first law of thermodynamics explicitly invokes a closed thermodynamic system by very definition. Okay? Does the first law of thermodynamics say mass is conserved? No. Does it say energy is conserved? No. It says the internal energy and extensive property of a closed thermodynamic system remains constant. It just changes form from one to another. Okay. Good. That basically is the first law of thermodynamics in a nutshell. It's inappropriate use by many commentators around the health and fitness industry is in that they state that calories in, calories out is a sensible utilitarian approach to and a tool that can be used to predictably alter your weight and um, and that calories in, calories out is underpinned by the first law of thermodynamics. Well, I've just covered why it isn't covered by the first law of thermodynamics and in another in five minutes or less briefing that I will record soon, I will describe to you the reason why calories in, calories out is not at all anything to do with your weight. I'll give you a bit of a hint before we even get into that though since we have a little bit of time left on this session. Here we go. Calories are a measurement of heat energy specifically and only heat energy, nothing else. They are defined as such, they are measured as such, that's what they are. Photons of light interacting with a, with a, a, a body of water such as to change the temperature of that body of water, that water being of a certain weight or a certain mass, um, that's basically it. Okay, photons do not have a mass. They weigh nothing. They have no rest mass whatsoever. They cannot be brought to rest. Ergo, no amount of absorbing photons nor of exuding photons will change the mass of the body so-called absorbing nor so-called exuding those photons. We're done here. The only way to change your body mass is to change the amount of mass in your body to all intents and purposes here on Earth. Okay, so there we have it in five minutes or less, a brief summary of what the first law of thermodynamics actually does say, what it doesn't say, where is it useful? It's useful basically by those people who in the Industrial Revolution were designing steam engines and making calculations around how they had to build these things so that they would work. 
Uh, is it anything to do with the human body and open thermodynamic system? No, it isn't. We're done here. See you next time.